Well, as this Afghanistan disaster continues to unfold, I told you yesterday it was going to be interesting to watch how the administration responded to this with press. They'd probably like to hide under a rock at this point, but that's not possible. Apparently, unless you're Kamala Harris, because they've disappeared her. Uh, so what disposition would the administration have going forward in regards to this disaster? Now, I said that we could probably tell a lot by this George Stephanopoulos interview with the president that dropped, well, excerpts yesterday. And the interview aired this morning, highly edited, or as the left loves to say, deceptively edited, chopped up piecemeal segments. So in a nutshell... How did President Biden come off? There was no good time to leave. But if there's no good time, if you know you're going to have to leave eventually, why not have the, everything in place to make sure Americans to get out, to make sure our Afghan allies get out, so we don't have these chaotic scenes in Kabul? Number one, as you know, the intelligence community did not say back in June or July that, in fact, this was going to collapse like it did. Number one. They thought the Taliban would take over, but not this quickly. But not this quickly, not even close. We took precautions. That's why I authorized that there be 6,000 American troops to flow in to accommodate this exit, number one. And number two, provided all that aircraft in the Gulf to get people out. We pre-positioned all of that, anticipated that. He's trying to blame this on intelligence, and intelligence is going to turn this right back around because numerous reports say, yes, in fact, they were warning him that this was going to happen. You've had the State Department, and you also have the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff on completely different pages on this issue. Uh, this is insane. No, they just, this was just, it was half-assed. They didn't take any precautions. That's the whole point. It was pure chaos. And we know this because, again, here's Democrat-friendly CNN. Clarissa Ward, by the way, has done a fabulous job on reporting on the ground in Kabul. She had this to say about the insanity outside of the airport and really the responsibility of this chaos. Listen to this. Is the panic, the lack of clear information, the rumor mill is in overdrive, there's hysteria. You have Taliban fighters with whips, with guns. You have US and UK soldiers who are not allowing people in. You have mixed messaging coming through about what kind of paperwork you need and how you can get on flight and where you can go. I mean, it is just an absolute mess. And we heard President Biden say yesterday in his uh, comments to ABC News that this is not a failure. And I think a lot of people outside that airport, particularly those taking the kinds of extreme actions we're just talking about, would like to know if this isn't failure, what does failure look like exactly? That's CNN, by the way. Now, to underscore this lack of preparation, this is Defense Department spokesman John Kirby. As of today, how many Americans, uh, American citizens remain in, in Afghanistan? I don't know. Of the 2,000 um, uh, over the last 24 hours, I, I think uh, nearly 300 of them were uh, uh, Americans. Acknowledging that, yeah, they really don't even know how many Americans are in Afghanistan. This is all pretty insane. Uh, he says that they have no idea. De the Defense Department has no clue who is there. You can't know who you've got left to rescue, obviously, if you don't even know who's in the country. What gets me is that, and I, this was a really great point that was made, uh, by someone earlier today, and that we know the names of like all of these people who even just showed up, for instance, at the Capitol on January 6th and were going to food trucks, but we don't have a list of the Americans who were in Kabul. That's indefensible. I mean, this is a disastrous lack of planning, and people are paying for it with their lives. In any case, there will be no new and improved, nicer, softer Taliban. We're going to talk more about the China connection there and what that means for the G7's agenda more next week. But in terms of women's quote-unquote rights, I can't even believe anybody's saying that with a straight face in context of Taliban. I mean, they're, already, they're literally erasing women from storefronts and public, and public places. Take a look at this. Actually covering them up. Pretty unbelievable. No, this is the kinder, gentler Taliban. There's no new Taliban. And everyone who's reported from Afghanistan corroborates this. So it's an unmitigated disaster. It is an absolute geopolitical embarrassment. This is going to forever define Joe Biden. It's going to forever define this administration. And he just used what should have been, if his people were smart, they were trying to rehabilitate him with this interview. He just doubled down on every dumb point. He's not owning this at all. I mean, yesterday, no, no discussion as to how many Americans might be left behind. 
We have thousands of Americans over in Kabul right now, and the United States doesn't know anything about that. They say that they have no idea they couldn't have predicted any of this 11 days out, except for the fact that the Taliban were just talking about it on WhatsApp, and they were just bragging about it. I, they used WhatsApp for the second time now to actually take over, take over uh, geographical areas. But no, everyone was too busy in this administration watching Facebook and Twitter for COVID wrong think. No, Biden knew. He was told this was going to be a disaster. And that's essentially what he's saying. He's, he's, he's not, good heavens, saying that there was no other possibility except for chaos. Hmm. And the truth is, honestly, we shouldn't really, we shouldn't be here. Everyone agrees that a withdrawal was needed. It was going to happen regardless. But after that, the way to do it, that was up to this administration. They were the ones who set the date. They were the ones who went to September and then decided now. They were the ones who decided to close Bagram. They were the ones who decided to not situate all the visas and everything else in order to, uh, to get everyone out and evacuate all Americans and Afghan assets safely. Now they have to actually literally negotiate with the Taliban for the safety of Americans, for safe passage. This is, I mean, honestly, it's kind of in some ways comes off like this massive hostage negotiation. And that really is kind of what it is. Although I think we're, depending on how long this drags out, I really don't think that the Taliban is going to be very welcoming after a couple of weeks of Americans trying to control them to get other people out. Now, it could actually very well end up being like a 1979 Tehran sort of situation. I mean, at this point, how do you get the Taliban to do anything? They're in control. You lost your leverage. The time to negotiate with them was before you pulled out and lost control of the country. That's what Trump was doing. And you can love him or hate him, but he had a hand to play then. And now we don't. So the Taliban are holding all the cards and you're going to have to offer some kind of carrot. Otherwise, you're going to be looking at thousands of Americans who might not get out of Kabul. That's called doubling down on disaster. And that's exactly what Biden did here. And now he's having to re-engage our military on a much bigger scale in Afghanistan, which means we had no exit plan from this administration. And for a guy who says that he doesn't want to send our sons and daughters to war, he sure as hell committed 7,000 of them to do just that, didn't he? Putting thousands of American lives in harm's way. Yes, that's going to necessitate that we have to go back in. That's the new strategy from the Biden administration.